Okay, everyone, thanks for stopping by. That dog. Today's video is going to be kind of a review, I guess, install, first look, install. Now, for those of you who follow the channel or have been with me for a little while, you might know that I've got the projector DC DC, I don't know, 20 25 amp charger over the back. I think it's the IDC 25, I'll put that up on the screen. Over the back of the Bajero. Now, that takes the solar input that I've got from the two solar panels up on top. Uh, 120 watts a piece, so we've got 240 watts of solar up top, and it also takes the input from the alternator here, and that charges the auxiliary battery that we've got over the back of the Bajero in the third row seat well. It's been over there for probably about four or five years now. It's been over there for quite some time. You know, I've changed things around a little bit here and there, and, and whilst I've been reasonably happy with the projector charger, I've never been overly happy, I don't think, with uh, how it was handling the solar input. I've never measured it in particular, other than just monitoring the battery voltage. It does a better job of doing the DC-DC charger from the alternator than it does charging from the solar panels. With that in mind, I've been considering a number of options. I was looking at getting another EP Ever solar charger, MPPT solar charger, similar to the one that I've got in the caravan. I was going to upgrade the one in the caravan to a 40 amp, I think it's a 30 or something I've got in there at the moment. I was going to throw a 40 amp in there, take the 30 amp out of the caravan and stick that over the back. Still allow the projector to handle the alternator charging and do the DC-DC, but the solar side, I was going to swap over for the EP ever. I was also considering some other options there as well. So with that in mind, I've been keeping an eye out for alternatives, you know, I was just keeping it on the market, seeing what was going to pop up. In addition to doing a lot of gum treeing and stuff, and you're saying, product reviews on stuff that I've picked off Gumtree. I also have a look at the Facebook Marketplace and I was actually looking for 12 volt battery chargers. I do have one in there uh, that I got from Supercheap a little while ago. I was looking at doing a review. I've shot some footage on that. Been really, really happy with that. Uh, that's a 20 amp uh, battery charger. And I actually spotted this Matson uh, 30, was it MA30 DCS. Now this retails at Supercheap for around about $550 mark. This one has actually come with a warranty, and I won't tell you how, but this one has actually come from a warranty from a genuine battery store, and I paid $240 for it. So I've really got myself a bit of a bargain here. I have seen them cheaper than what uh, Supercheap is selling them for, but if I wanted to go, if I wanted to walk in the Supercheap and buy this over the counter, 509 bucks or 520 bucks. Now, um, reviews on these specifically were really hard to come by and I haven't been able to find any, albeit that the Matson gear does have some good reviews uh, and again, predominantly sold through super cheap and you know, other battery stores and stuff like that. Do a lot of charges, battery charges, solar charges uh, and that sort of stuff. This is a 30 amp, so the DC DC that I've got in there, the projector is a 25 amp, so I'm picking up 5 amps of charge, that's no real big difference. The main reason I'm happy to go with this one over the projector is Again, not been super happy with the charging uh, from the solar input on the projector, but it won't accept my 24 volt panels. Where I've picked up old household panels that I've put up on the caravan, I wanted to replicate that on the car. The ones that I've got on at the moment are 12 volt panels, so they've been okay and they're set up in parallel. So I'm inputting you know, 12, 14 volts, whatever it might be, uh, from those panels into that controller and they can handle that. But the projector won't take anything more than around about a 20 volt input, I think it is, for, from a solar input. This one will take up to 50. So what I'll be doing is swapping out the two 120 watt 12 volt panels for one 250 watt 24 volt panel, if that makes sense. Uh, so ultimately I'm still going to have around about 250 watts on there. And then obviously this is going to do the DC-DC charging from the alternator as well. One well, as far as this unit itself, just reading stuff off the box. So it's a 30 amp charge, so it'll accept up to 500 watts input from solar panels. And that'll take input obviously from your alternator and your solar panels. It's fully programmable supposedly, we'll have to see how we go about that. It will do lithium, that's another reason I wanted to go with this. Because at some point I will be upgrading to lithium in the car and in the caravan, so I'm really keen to do that. So I wanted something that was going to handle that. The projector won't do lithium. It does say it'll take 12 volt or 24 volt uh, DC input. Obviously, it's got all the protections, got the LCD screen. It's a maximum input voltage of 50 volts of DC from solar panels. We can set the input priority whether we want to have the solar panels or the alternator be priority. Obviously, we're going to set the alternator to be priority. It's going to be the one that's providing the most output and the most consistent output. So when we're driving, we want the alternator to take over. 
and do its job when the alternator cuts out so we lose our priority input we want it to go to the fallback input which is obviously going to be our solar panels and that's exactly what the projector did anyway it's a little bit larger than the projector that we've got over the back we have to see whether this is actually going to fit where we want it to go now this is probably around about the equivalent size of the ep ever which is just the solar controller we're going to do our charging from our solar and it's also going to do the dc dc there's our inputs just on the bottom. I'm just trying to feel this. This certainly feels like it's a, an aluminium or something for a heat sink. But that's one thing that I did find with the projection. I have seen other people say that they have had issues with it overheating. And certainly in a hot car, that thing can get super, super hot. What I'm feeling, so there is a base plate here, uh, which is aluminium and feels like a decent size heat sink. The rest of the case is all plastic. I'm seeing a little fan in the side here, which is nice. The projector does not have a fan, so when it heats up, it just heats up, relies on this passive heat sink. I really want to lift this panel and see what's under here. Anyway, you can see we've got a little LCD panel here, and we've got some push button control, so that'll be interesting. I'm curious to see whether there are just some standard profiles for the different types of batteries, you know, whether it be lithium, AGM, uh, that sort of stuff. I'm guessing there's going to be some sort of user profile that's going to be on there as well. Again, similar to the EP ever. So it feels like a reasonably well-made unit. All seems to be put together. All the screws match up. There's no particular sharp edges. I'm happy that there's a heatsink. I'm even happier. <laughs> I'm even happier that there's two fans. One on this side and one on this side. Uh, what is interesting though is that I can see both of those fans are pushing air uh, it's hard to tell whether they're pushing, pulling air in or pushing air out, uh, but there are some vents down the bottom here, and both of these fans are either pulling in or pushing out. I thought there might have been a push-pull sort of thing going on, pushing in one side, pulling out the other, uh, but they aren't. They're both facing the same direction. Uh, the solar panel input is anywhere from 10 to 50 volts, 40 amp max and 500 watt max. DC input, so this is from our alternator. So 11 to 50 volts, and again, 40 amp max, 450 watts max. Uh, output 12 volt at 30 amp. So let's just pop this little panel off, and let's have a quick look. So these are just our screws uh, for making contact there. This is our input for our temp sensor. It's obviously the input, and then this is the output. It's gonna go straight to our battery, which we've got all those connections already set up. So it should be a fairly straightforward, simple process. It's just gonna be the mounting that's gonna take the problem, take the time. And included in the box, that's our temp sensor. So that'll just plug into the bottom there like that. This is our projector. So I'm reasonably happy with how tidy that install is over the back. This is a considerably larger unit, so we're still going to mount it there. Maybe that makes the most sense. Here's our wires running back from the alternator, so we don't want to mess about with that. We're going to leave that as is. We will mount that basically right there. It's going to be a tight fit. I think we can get away with that. We might actually disconnect that seat belt there as well just let that do its own thing now we are going to move some stuff out from under here in addition to being where the auxiliary battery is this is where i store uh, everything else basically just so this is generally what it looks like day to day so i'm just going to remove some of this stuff we'll go around the front we'll disconnect the battery so we're not sending any power back here so at the moment you can see we are hopefully you can see that that looks like we're getting 13.8 volts so I must have scared it into action because normally I don't see that higher voltage getting applied to the battery, 13.9, that's really good. Uh, that's the best it's worked. Normally I'm only sort of seeing the 12.8, the 12.9, which suggests that the battery is full. So it's very, very rare that I will see that sort of voltage, unless I'm running off the alternator. If the car is running, then I'll see those sort of voltages. But it's very rare that I'll see that sort of voltage uh, coming off the solar panels. So that's good, that's working. Too little too late, I'm afraid. So these are our two solar panels, and you can see that the way they set up, they overlap this section here, so they hang off. So the problem is, when I want to put my kayak on the roof, without these pieces of timber up here, which I've just jerry-rigged just recently, the kayaks will rest on the solar panels, which I don't want. When I switch these over for the one 24 volt, I'm going to go long ways rather than going across and it will actually fit into the frame of the rack itself, which means I will be able to use this rack kind of as roof racks 
uh, and just slide my kayaks up and have them resting on these bars here rather than having to put something like this on it to get it higher than the level of the solar panels. The other thing that's going to allow me to do is the way I've got these solar panels attached is four of these on each panel and they go down just hook onto the frame itself and then they tighten up. Unfortunately with a lot of four wheel driving these things these things have a habit of backing off so I've got to race around and tighten these all the time. With those coming down and attaching to the rack itself it's meant that I haven't been able to leave that water tank that I fitted up here a little while ago, that 35 litre water tank, and I want to get that back up here. So the plan is to go with the one single 250 watt panel, which will sit inside the frame, have the water tank sitting under that, and then I'll get the use of the rack back, I'll get the water tank back up here, so that should make everything just that much simpler and that much tidier. That's the plan. If you follow the channel, I've also got two sets of folding panels, 200 watt, 24 volt panels. So that means I'm gonna be able to put an input on the bull bar probably, or possibly at the back of the car, and uh, add those in to uh, top up the charge coming into the car as well. Now one thing I am considering, and if anybody's done this, let me know. I wanna get this mounted up more as a permanent type setup, where I can just come and connect the air hose on the back, turn it on and away I go. So what I'm actually considering is up in behind this wheel, pretty much in this area here, up under behind that rear wheel, the driver's side rear wheel, there's some space. So what I want to do is mount that upside down, up in that space, uh, route the air hose out the back here, um, have it obviously all wired up, have it on the remote switch, and uh, just get that sorted out. So if anybody's done that, let me know. If anybody's got some ideas, I'm listening. Here's our fuse box that we have on the side. This is an eBay special. And these are A&L fuses. Uh, most of those are around about a 30 amper. With A&L fuses, it's harder to get anything under around about the 30. I have seen them, but they're quite expensive. To the lights, so we buy a fuse and we can run decent sized cable to these as well. Got a similar one to this, actually under the bonnet of the Pajero, which is where we're going to go now to disconnect our battery. There's that other ANL fuse panel you can see over here. I'll give it our isolated switch for our winch at the front, which we're going to move over into the cab when we get that panel from uh, Colin set up. Okay, there we go, disconnected. So we've got no solar input coming down now. So just to give you an idea how I got this under, um, if you lift these up, just pop this little cap, there is a screw there, a bolt. That will just pop out, so I stick that somewhere safe, and you can lift this panel. This is the same on both sides, you've got that little, uh, you've got that tie down point. Take that out, and then just lift your panel out. I'm trying to avoid removing this panel as much as I can. If you need to, just pull the rubber off here, this panel up and that just gives you a little bit of working room. Pull this panel out a little bit and just get some working space behind it. I guess you can see the size of the projector compared to the Matson. It's about half the size. Not half the weight but definitely half the size but on the projector I guess you oh, that's rubber. On the projector you can see there's not much heat sink to it at all. There's certainly no fan on it. It is an aluminium case but that's probably all the heat sink you've got and it's a, it doesn't do a very good job. And this thing heats up like a bitch. We have my solar screens, which are great. Uh, thanks again, Alan. But when this thing heats up on a hot day, it, it just struggles. And obviously, you know, it's gonna struggle to put the power into your AGM. When your AGM's hot and the fridge is running, you know, double time on a hot day. Still works good, still works okay. Um, I'm not, not talking it down at all. I just think the medicine's gonna be better. Fingers crossed, I hope it is. This one doesn't do lithium either. If we get around to doing a lithium, then I'm going to need something with a lithium profile, which the Matson has. The dog's around here, I think he just shit himself on that. Now the old projector used to just take a ground from the chassis, and then you take a positive input from your alternator. Oh, sorry, I think that was all, no, that was going to the battery. Um, so take a positive input from your alternator, your solar panels, and then just take a positive over to the battery, and then it will everything be ground back to chassis and I'm going to replicate that with this one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to ground right here, which is gonna be nice and close. 
we'll tidy up this connection, make sure we can get ourselves a decent joint there, and then we'll go to ground there. Put that up there, I'll just tuck that in there like that. There we go. Beautiful, like I bought one. We do have a DC negative coming from the front. So we're gonna use this as our negative for our or our ground for our solar panels, because our solar panels are grounded just up here, or just here, you can see that ground coming from the solar panels there. So we're going to ground the chassis here, so we should be right. Um, we still have our ground from the battery, so we're going to use that ground and we'll go to DC. So this one that we're going to ground where we took that bolt out, is going to go to our PV negative. Cover that up with that because we don't have any black wire, just as close as we can get. I have black wire, but it's not as heavier gauge is this stuff and I prefer to have the heavier gauge wire than the right colour. That there. So I'll be no confusing that with the positive and I'll know what's going on anyway. This is our solar input here. Again I'm not sure whether this has a common ground. Um, whether I can just connect one ground and then it's all going to come up. Or whether I need to connect those all individually. This is our input from our solar panel up top. This is our going to be our ground which is going to go here where we disconnected that uh, seat belt. Should be a reasonable ground there. We might need to clean that up a little bit. Uh, this is our input from our alternator over the front, or our, coming from our main battery. That's a negative coming from our main battery. This is the cable running over to our auxiliary battery. Um, and this is going to be a ground, which I, for now, it's all I had. I'm going to connect that to the negative of our battery. Uh, and we'll head down to J-Car tomorrow and get a better gauge wire than that. But this is just a get it all wired up, make sure it's all working, get it mounted, etc. And then I'll just have to buy, I don't know, a, a meter's length or something of a decent gauge cable. Or be it that we are going to ground to the chassis over there. So we'll be making ground from this part of the chassis here and this part of the chassis from the auxiliary battery as well. So again, not knowing whether this uses a common ground or not, I'm assuming it does. We'll be grounding over there here. That ground going over to the battery there is probably going to be a moot point, but we're going to do it anyway. Actually, what we might do before we get too crazy and connect everything back up. I might just connect it and see if it comes live and comes up. Right, so we're showing a 12.7 volt at the battery. It is bringing in some sort of solar but it is overcast and it's five o'clock in the afternoon. So let's just go and start up the car and see whether we get any input from the alternator. Now we will expect it to take a minute, obviously, because it's going to need to wait for the main battery to get its charge. So I'm going to have to do some reading because I can't tell how to see the input uh, from the alternator. So we've turned the solar off, so we should be seeing something from the main battery. There you go. Okay, so we're saying 13.8, 13.9. It's definitely coming from the alternator because we've chart turned the solar off. Uh, pressing and holding this button here takes us into the menu. Going down to this one here. Um, if we have that off, that turns the priority off for the solar panels. If we have it on, then the priority is for the solar panel. So we want the priority for the alternator. So off is the correct setting. All right, and you can see on the menu, that's a little battery there. So that's basically saying that our charge is coming from our alternator. If you've got the little sun over here, that's our charge coming from the solar panels. So you can see we're now hitting 13.8, 14 volts. 14.4, 14.2. So you can see here we're taking input from our alternator. This is the voltage input that's going to the battery. I'm not entirely sure what this is here, but it does say that we're in bulk and we are charging. So what we might do is go and just turn the car off so it start, stops pulling power from the alternator and we'll see that switch over to solar in theory. Oh. So you can see it is now showing solar up in that top left hand corner and it's putting in about 13.2 volts. Readings could be a little bit bigger. There is a float and bulk charge indicator here. Uh, but overall it's saying it's charging, it's doing its thing, doing what it needs to do. I am really noticing how much of a heftier unit that is, there's no missing that. Not like that little projector in the corner. But in theory, 
This should do a better job than the projector. We'll put our single 24 volt panel on the top, and our water tank, and we can go back to using our kayak. So there's a whole bunch of wins that come with this that have nothing to do with the controller itself, other than the, the benefits that it's going to provide because of the difference between this and the projector and just uh, how I'm going to be able to use the car. That's pretty much it. That's the Matson in the back of the car. Uh, look, it wasn't a real big video. It was just literally swapping over the projector for the Matson. Another reason I'm happy to get away from the projector is I did have a 15 amp uh, battery, 12 volt battery charger, 240 volt battery charger in the projector. I had that for probably about three or four years and that packed it in recently. So I guess once bitten, twice shy. I wasn't real keen to go and look at a, another projector that was going to do the lithium. This popped up like a bargain of price. Again, 520 is super cheap. I paid 240 bucks for this. Um, I have seen them around 320, 340, 350, that sort of stuff online. It was a bit of a gamble being that um, the Matson brand, and I couldn't find any reviews of this. I believe Matson's a reasonably well known brand. They certainly do lots of charges and that sort of stuff. I guess we'll suck and see. So anyway, I'll report back on this later on. It was literally just to show you me swapping this out, putting this in. When I get around to swapping over the solar panels, I'll do that as well and we'll get that water tank back up and get that all mounted properly. That's it, thanks very much for stopping by. That's the Matson, whatever it is, uh, 30 amp DC, DC charger slash solar panel, blah, 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 for your auxiliary battery over the back of here. Back of your car, your Pajero, whatever you've got. So hopefully, uh, in addition to uh, the benefit of taking a 24 volt input from the solar panel, uh, hopefully that will also do a little bit better with the panels that we've got up there now and uh, just get that battery topped up just that little bit better. Anyway, uh, we'll report back later on uh, once we've had some experience with it and we'll see how it goes. Cheers guys, catch you in the next one.